morning. Good morning. I have a couple of announcements. The main announcements are in your bulletin and have been shown up on the screen. Uh, the first announcement is that yesterday was the bazaar, and I have been told that there are still items in the basement for sale, and Lillian Creighton will be down there to assist you. Also, we have some sheets at each doorway that are in regards to requesting visitation by the pastor. So if you are interested, please fill those out. If you know someone that would want the pastor to visit, also please uh, have them fill them out. We welcome our radio listeners. My name is Robin McKee, and I'm the worship leader, and Stephanie Kletzer will be our song leader today. Would you please... God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Will you please join me in the call to worship? And God said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Blessing and honor and glory and might be unto the Lamb. Worthy is Christ who has ransomed us by his blood for every tribe and tongue and nation and made his people a kingdom and priest to our God. Holy, 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 holy is, is the Lord God, God Almighty, who was and is and is, and is to come. come. Amen. Amen. Please join us for him, 110, a mighty fortress is our God. Let's go, Zion. 
And now if you join me in Psalm 2, it is on page 739 in the hymnal if you want to follow along. Why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of earth rise up and the rulers take counsel together against God and God's anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds and cast their cords from us. The one who sits in the heavens laughs and holds them in derision. Then God will speak to them in anger and terrify them in fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord who said to me, You are my son today, I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and trembling. Humble yourself before the Lord, lest God be angry and you perish in the way, for God's wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Please join me for hymn 405 in Seek Ye First. the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. from the children's choir. Thank you. 
Jessica Miller is going to give us the children's lesson. Thanks, you guys. That was amazing. I love both of those songs. All right, so anybody know what this is? Right. And what do we use spoons for? Right, exactly. See, with if we didn't have spoons, it would be very difficult to eat certain foods, wouldn't it? It would be hard to eat like jello, soup, pudding, or milk every morning. It'd be really hard, wouldn't it? Mashed potatoes, lots of food that we eat, we use spoons. I have a special guest today, and his name is Maynard Coonan, and he's going to show you another use for spoons. And then after he's done, we're going to see if you guys want to do something with the spoons. And if there's anyone that wants to come up and join us, they sure can. And with the help of Glenda, too. So. If you guys want to come around so you can see him a little bit better, you sure can. Come down here. Yeah, come on closer. Yeah. you guys. So what'd you think? Fun. So I thought it was fun too. So if we didn't have spoons to help us eat, life and meals would be so much more difficult. Using spoons make our lives easier and gets food to our bodies so we can survive. 
Maynard, with the help of Glenda, used his spoons to feed our souls with music and to proclaim God's love for us. And you kids all fed our souls when you sang earlier and when you played spoons just now. So the next time you grab a spoon to eat with, remember how spoons nourish our body with food and they can nourish our body with music. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of music and for everyone who shares their talents with us. Thank you for spoons, forks, knives, and for food for our bodies. Amen. All right, thanks, you guys. Thanks, Maynard. Our Old Testament reading today is Isaiah chapter 53, verses 1 through 6. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shot and like a root out of the dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We are like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Will you please stand for the gospel reading? The reading today is Luke chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Please remain standing as we sing the hymn, Jesus, Remember Me, page one, excuse me, 488 in the hymnal. May be seated. I'd like to take a moment to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. 
in this coming week. Um, I imagine many of you may be sitting down around table with family, and if you're serving a fancy meal, you will wonder, uh, or maybe you already know what the two forks are for. Uh, one is the dinner fork and one is the salad fork. But if you happen to sit down at, at, at another table and there's two spoons, now you know what the two spoons are for. <laughs> that sounds like something my family would do, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. <laughs> well, it is Christ the King Sunday. And it's really strange that our gospel lesson uh, was that Easter or Good Friday lesson where we stand around uh, that dirty, old, rugged cross and we see Jesus hanging there with a sign above his head saying, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. You may have heard some other scriptures saying that uh, they have no king but Caesar. And quite often we go back to the early biblical account of the Israelites in the Old Testament. And they were doing pretty well as long as they had Moses, as long as they worshipped the Lord their God. But, you know, as they started having leaders and as they started getting this command to go forth and enter into the promised land, and sometimes that was a difficult process, and each time they met another nation, they realized the power and the strength of the king that would lead the people into battle. And they started wondering, maybe we should have a king. Maybe we should have a king. This morning at New Hope, at, at Dumont, uh, there was a children's service there. A uh, message was about all the great things a king would do for us. A king will keep the peace. A king will make sure there's prosperity throughout the land. And that sounds good for a children's message. But if you remember biblical history, Moses didn't think that was such a great idea. Moses talked to God about this, these stubborn people. And between God and Moses, there were some warnings. Moses said to the people, if you want a king like all the other nations, know that the king will take your sons from your homes and from your fields, and the king will take your sons and call them forth as soldiers to go into battle because that's what kings do they go forth to conquer your sons may never return to you alive and Moses hesitated waiting for a response but we want a king And so Moses said to them, Don't you know that a king will take your daughters and he will force them to come into his palace and serve? Serve the meals. Wash the dishes, clean the rooms, scrub the floors. Don't you know that you may never see your daughters again because now they will serve the king? And Moses waited. And then he heard, But we want a king.
Moses said, Don't you know that the king will take your money? He will tax you. Don't you know the king will take your food, your crops out of your fields to serve the people in the palace? Don't you know these things? And Moses was silent. And he heard. But we want a king. King David wrote the book of Psalms. He collected some. He wrote some of the other ones. In Psalms 1, he opens these songs, these poems, with a song of blessing, a song of compassion. The Lord is protecting you. The Lord sees you. The Lord loves you. Come unto the Lord. Give praise to him. Psalms 2. Why? Why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? Why do the kings of earth rise up? Didn't they hear the blessings of the Lord your God? They take counsel together against God and against God's anointed. They say, let us burst their bonds. Let us do away with the law the books of the law, the Ten Commandments. Let's just each one of us do whatever seems right to us. We don't need God or his anointed ones. The psalm was a song of coronation when the kings were anointed by the prophets, they would read these. But when God heard, when God saw what was in their hearts, he sat in heaven and laughed at them. Oh, you who think you're as smart Oh, you who think you are as powerful am I, can you hold the world in your hands? And yet you think you can rule nations without my help. God will speak to them in anger and terrify them in fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. King David, the promise of God that rule with justice and righteousness and someday, your line will continue forever. One will come, and the government will rest upon his shoulders, and he will be king of kings and lord of lords. His reign shall be forever. Forever. They said, we have no king but Jesus. What do you say? The song Seek Ye First was written by a young lady who got out of school and had the rest of her life before her. And she wondered, what will I do? I have been to church, I've been to Sunday school, I'm baptized, I'm ready to take on the world. And yet I can't find a job. 
And she had talent. She was musically inclined. The field of entertainment was wide open for her. And she got a job, and she didn't like it. She got another job, and she didn't like it. She got another job, and she didn't like it. And she realized that it's hard to be a Christian when you're working for a living in certain jobs. And she got a little disappointed, but she turned to her Bible, turned to Matthew chapter 6, and read the story of how God will take care of little birds. Don't you see how these little ones God shelters them. God takes care of them. Will he not for you even more so? And she wrote the words, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things. King David, when he took the throne, when he was anointed as king, uh, to go back to those first five books of Moses, the first five books of the law, and to read what the law says in Deuteronomy, Moses didn't think it was a good idea to have a king, but Moses wrote the law, says, if you're going to have a king, the law applies to the king, too. When the king sits on his throne after he's received the anointment and taken the vows, he is to call forth the scribes, and they are supposed to gather round him. And there, as they hand to him the book of the law, he is supposed to sit there and read it. All five books. And when he is done reading it, he is supposed to turn to the scribe and ask for a pen. And then, with paper, or whatever they used back then, he begins writing word for word every word in those first five books. So that he will not forget what a king is supposed to do. Our gospel lesson from the gospel of Luke with that vision of the old rugged cross, with that vision of Jesus and two criminals hanging there. Reminds me of that verse from the Psalms. I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. Who has believed this? Why do the nations conspire? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Do you not know that he grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground? He had no beauty. Oh, there's a picture of Jesus. Uh, that's, that's an interpretation. No one knows what Jesus looks like. But Isaiah tells them he had no beauty, no majesty to attract us to him. Eh, it's not the best picture, I guess. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering, familiar with pain. Ain't no king in this world's going to be crucified. Kings rule. Kings sit on their throne. Kings tell us what to do and how to live. Jesus? The slain one, 
crucified, crowned with a thorns around his head, whipped. We see him, and we see them there on the ground among him, those that whipped him and beat him, those that are gambling for his clothes, the leaders that ridiculed him, the Roman soldiers that are sent to carry out his sentence. And we see Jesus looking up to the sky, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. We sang the song, Jesus, remember me when you come into the kingdom. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come. But unless we too sit there before the cross, unless we too look up to Jesus and hear the words, Father, forgive them, then the whole Bible is just a story. When we read it and we see the verse that says the wages of sin is death, and we look at ourselves and says, well, we're no better than they were. And we have that same sentence of death upon our lives. But the good news of the gospel and the letters to the the epistles and the letters to us state that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. And as we're looking up at the cross, we can hear the voice of the criminal on the one side Jesus, if you're the king, save us. Did I do that mockingly enough? Come on, God. Why are we here? Call your angels. Get us down from here. From the day of creation, God had a plan. A plan that deals with our redemption and our forgiveness. And some people look at this scene at the cross and think that the devil is laughing his head off. And I turn back to the book of Psalms. God in the heaven is laughing laughing because indeed he has set his king upon his holy hill and his plan of redemption his plan of salvation is done is done for us and for all nations and countries who will humble themselves and confess that Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. And we believe in him. Even though we might yet be sinners, but if sinners we be, we are, then we have to know that we are stained with the blood of Jesus that removes from us the curse of death. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. Do you believe The affirmation of faith number 886, I think it's printed in your bulletin. Could you respond with this?
as we are led. We believe in the God, creator of the world and of all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in this Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe God help our, our unbelief. unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and the community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts, and entrusted us that all may have enough in all the responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory be to the God on high and on earth, peace. Almighty God, who calls forth your Son, Jesus Christ, to be King of all the realm, where all people, nations, and language should serve him, make us be loyal followers of our living Lord, that we may always hear his word, follow his teachings, and live in his spirit. Hasten now the day of salvation when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. To the glory of God and to all God's people who said, Amen. Amen. Speak also those words of faith. Our Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, I'd like to wish you, wish you all a happy Thanksgiving, and I'd like to ask you to not only on Thursday pray with your families, but pray with me now. Thank you, Lord, for your finished work on the cross where you have made a personal relationship with you possible. You are our maker, and only you can truly satisfy the longing in our souls. Thank you that we can seek you and that you can be found and that sometimes you have to come and find us. Thank you that through you all nations and families may be blessed. Gather us together this Thanksgiving and remind us how blessed we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join us, stand and join us for our last hymn, Soon and Very Soon, number 706. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king soon and very soon we are going to see the king Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Now dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to say the King. Religion can have great theology, and religious people can have great knowledge and scholarship, but if we don't know Jesus, then we are being ruled by the wrong king. We skipped a hymn, the one by Charles Wesley, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. When Charles Wesley wrote this hymn, he remembered all those other Christmas songs that he wrote. But he didn't want to preach just scripture lessons. He wanted to make it practical. He wanted to make it heartfelt, to fill that longing within himself and that longing within all of us. And so can we finish this service with that song, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Release us, let us find our rest in thee. His strength and consolation, hope of all the Happy Thanksgiving.